control station, non-reflectless. It is wireless, so that's what we're going to be using for the connection to the data collector. Um, right now, I just got to set up on the tripod. Uh, a couple of basics on the instrument. This is phase one. Uh, a lot of people, especially if you're used to other models of total stations, think that this will be phase one because the tangents are here. But the tangents are on the reverse side on the top con, so you're looking that way as phase one for the instrument. Uh, we'll turn it on, get it started. And the DTS 233W. Part one's there. You can adjust the contrast as you need it. The screen will go away in a couple seconds, or you can hit enter to make it go away. So we're not level, so we'll just do a basic leveling of the gun. Again, this is up to the user, the method they want to use. Just using the legs right now, right? Yeah, so I've got the bubble here. here. Yeah. Just like any toll station, or most toll stations uh, uh, of this age, I've got a vial level here. I'll level it along one plane. Just get it moderately close here. And then I'll turn it 90, and then level along this plane. All right, now that the instrument is level, the angle will display. A um, couple of basics on the gun. We're not really going to use the instrument interface very much at all. Uh, the one thing that you'll need to know how to do is the laser plummet. Um, this does not use an optical plummet. It uses a laser. Oh, this one has a laser. Good. So you hit the star key to activate that. And there happens to be a little icon that says laser. It has a little plumb bob next to it. That's the one. You can see when I do that, it puts a little laser dot on the floor. Nice. Now, when you're outside, that can wash out a little bit. Um, I usually will get uh, just kind of shadow it, put, put my body between it and the sun, and get a shadow on it, and then it's very clear from there. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it doesn't turn off automatically. You got to remember to turn it off. You just hit the same button to turn it off. And to get rid of the screen, you can just hit escape to jump back. Now, I have no idea if that data collector is properly configured with this instrument and if it's not we probably don't want to make that part of the video because okay, it's be really that's confusing fine. so let's I can try pause it. it and then we can come yeah. back so let's try that sir all right so we'll go ahead and uh, jump into survey pro to access the program you hit the little start icon here in the top left and jump down to survey pro here start the program first thing that comes up is a prompt you need to be prompted to open an existing job or create a new job so we'll go through creating a new job in this example. Now this unit's the uh, called the Recon, the specific model of data collector. For the most part, everything's controlled with the touch screen. It's got a few buttons on it, which we rarely use. So we'll be uh, messing with the touch screen primarily. So these are jobs that are already have been uh, have been done. Uh, but we're going to hit new to create a new job. Now for the recon, anytime you type or anytime you need to type in some place. Touch on the field that the, it needs to be gone in, so you tap in there, and then the keyboard comes up on the bottom of the screen. Now, it defaults to the date for the job name. Obviously, you'd want to change that, but we'll leave it with that and hit next. Should be really using a stylus for this. Yeah, there's not a stylus with it. Oh, shoot. All right. Uh, we can set a few project parameters here. These will likely never change. North azimuth, survey feet. Angles and degrees. You can adjust for earth curvature if you're doing a really long job. Next, that's not common. This is just all common. Yeah. Uh, so first point set up. Whatever you want your first point to be called, uh, with its location and description. Now, good question. Up oh, uh, just uh, off for the people viewing it. Uh, these parameters were set by the old area engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, you could choose your own floating grid system if you yeah, want. Yeah, you could put whatever northern what, elevation. That's, that's that you what want. he chose. So we're just gonna go with it. Yeah. With that. that could be changed at any time. Yes, sir. So what Survey Pro does is automatically start you with at least one point. So you've got one point for a setup. All right, to get the uh, survey started here, now this is your standard job menu. File, I can open another job, import data. Under Jobs, is all my job settings, including my instrument settings. Also, I can go in and edit any data I've already recorded. But survey is where we spend most of our time. We've got backside setup and traverse setup. So the first thing you do with a total station is a backside setup. So the occupy point, it defaults to that point we already put in. Now I could go in and go to the points list and add another point if I wanted to, but point number one will be fine. Instrument height, let's come back to the instrument here real quick. 
The instrument height on this particular instrument is measured to here. So from the ground yeah. up to that point, right there. Okay. That's where we measure our instrument height. We're not going to measure it today. 5.5 seems good. HR is height of rod. So that's going to be our rod height with a prism on it. We can always set that later. Um, right now it's not very important because we're not going to be using uh, a rod for any part of the back sight. So the basic principle of this particular back sight will be set the occupy point, in this case it's going to be point number one. We're going to back sight direction, in this case zero for north. And it's just going to be a matter of orientating the instrument to north. Now if you've got a compass, you'd be sighting something and you know trying to orientate the instrument uh, as accurately as you need it to be. But in this case, if no, no north is roughly that way. So we're going to do that. Um, then you've got a couple options on the bottom here. Circle, solve, and check. Circle is going to send this direction to the instrument and then adjust the horizontal angle for whatever I choose. So in this case, when I send the circle to the instrument, that will zero it out and become zero or north. Okay. If I was back setting east, I would choose what? east would be 90. I was doing west, it would be 270. Whatever that direction is that I set here, when I hit circle, it's going to send that to the instrument. All right, let's see if Bluetooth is working here. Next circle. All right, back side circle, I'm going to set to zero. Sorry. That's right. We'll My, this, will this, oops. Will this yeah, work? Some sort of pen would be. That's perfect. All right, we'll do that. Better than uh, my finger here, it's not working too good. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. There it goes. All right, we'll go zero now, nine, zero. And we'll say send to instrument. A bunch of beeps later. And there's a zero. And we just zeroed it out. Cool. So now that we've done that, to finish the backside setup, you just hit the solve button here, which is not going to solve for anything in particular. But that's just the function to finish it up. Um, now, here you've got some checks. Now, since we're not backsetting another point, there is no point in doing any of the checks. Um, I could take a shot and actually store the backset as a point. If I was going to do that, I'd have to put a prism out to the north. Oh, okay. And use that as the backsite. So that's okay. what I'm saying here is I'm actually shooting a prism on a pole that is north of the gun. Okay. And that would store that point in the job. If that's your workflow, then that's fine. You gotta send somebody out there with a prism and a pole, make sure that they're north of the instrument, and then you can store the backside point after you record it. Okay. But in this case, uh, we're not really gonna worry about it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit the checkbox here. And I've already sent the circle. I could send it again if I wanted to, but I don't have to because I've already done it. I can just hit the checkbox here on the bottom, and that will finish the backside setup. Oh, nope, never mind. It's making me send the circle again. So oh, right. okay. We'll do that real quick, send the circle. And again, that's just set to zero now. I should be able to hit the checkbox here. And it says back sight has been checks to the circle was set. Now, because we're not checking the point, we really don't care about this. So are you sure you want to continue? So it's making sure that before I leave this setup that I don't want to store a point and check it. You don't have to do that. It is up to the, uh, the operator in the field whether or not he wants to do that. I'm going to say I do want to continue with the setup or consider with this backside setup. And it's just going to show me a little map with the gun in the middle, arrow pointing north from my backside. Okay. And I can hit this little X to get out of here. So that's a basic backside setup. Um, again, if we want to do more with that, if we want to put a prism out there and take that and as a point, we can always do that. Now the other thing about the backside setup is if you do have a point that you want to use, um, and this is again Probably if you would come back later, instead of backsighting a direction, you can always backsight a point just by hitting this little box. Mm -hmm. So that switches it back and forth. So if you did have a point you wanted to use a backsight, you can do that by switching it that way. Okay. All right. Taking shots. Under Traverse Side Shot, that's where we can take all the measurements. We've got a point number. It automatically jumps to whatever next point number it is. In this case, it's going to be two. And then this is our description. Now we can change descriptions by again just tapping in this field and typing in new descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, it will um, 
keep a descriptions list, uh, meaning you could have your descriptions and kind of build them into a list here. You don't have to do that. You can do descriptions just typing them in manually all the time. HR is height of rod, so that's the height of our prism pole. Um, and that's the basics there. We're going to go ahead and sight in on our prism over here. And we're going to hit the side shot button. And we're going to take a shot. You can do right. the one on the table? Yeah, just a little prism on the table here. Okay. Uh, a couple things on the instrument back again. Uh, we do have uh, horizontal and vertical tangents here. Um, so I'm going to roughly sight in the prism. Take a look. Now the focus, for the optical focus, this is outside ring. So that's what's going to focus the image through the scope. Crosshair is a little blurry. The focus for the crosshair is this black circle here. All right, now that I'm close, I'm going to go ahead and lock the tangents. Now, this is different from some other instruments. The lock for the tangent on the top kind is the inside. So that will lock down the horizontal movement. Okay. Now, this becomes the fine adjust. Sure. Same thing for the vertical. Inside is your lock. So now it's locked vertically. Okay. And then I've got my fine adjust. So I'm just going to side in the center of the prism here. Enough. All right, so back to the data collector. I'm sighted on the prism. It's good. This is going to be point number two with that description on it, and that's my pretend rod height. To take the shot, you hit side shot. And just like that, it will show you in this little field all the particulars, horizontal angle, vertical angle, slope distance. And then it automatically jumps to point number three. To take another shot, I can choose to change the description if I want, but again, I just hit side shot to take another shot. And that's it. it shows point number three. Automatically nice. jumps to point number four. Okay. If I want, I can show that on a map, which will be very uninteresting in this case. It shows me where our points are and currently where the direction of the instrument is facing. Mm -hmm. Go back to input, and that will show me all my data again. Okay, so when you're turning between points, you have to remember, and sometimes this gets forgotten pretty easily, to unlock the tangents before you start moving the gun. Otherwise, if you have the tangents locked and you move the gun, you could damage the little pads that hold the tangents in place. Um, on the screen here, I've got a couple different things. I didn't mention it before, but the batteries along the side here, you've got a uh, battery indicator. Let me see if I can make the screen maybe a little brighter. There we go. You've got the battery indicator here, so that will indicate the level of the battery, the Bluetooth icon. When I'm actually connected, that will, uh, that will show up, otherwise it won't show up. Um, turning the gun on and off is the power button here. Uh, if you're turning the gun off, you'll be prompted if you hit the power button, if you really want to turn it off, yes or no. Anything you see along the bottom here is these F keys. So these F keys will correspond to a command along the bottom there. For the data collector, uh, you don't need to save anything. Um, anytime you take a shot or make any changes, Survey Pro will automatically save that. Um, the job name here, uh, there's a couple different ways to download this depending on what you've got in the office. If you still have the Foresight DXM software, you can use that. Um, otherwise, I believe with this version, you can go to File, Export, and you actually, actually export a text or CSV file and put it in the memory of the data collector. And then from there you can take a USB cord and download that to your computer. Okay. How long does the battery last on this, approximately? Um, do, well, batteries, as they age, they tend to get a little less powerful, but this yeah. was a really good battery in this instrument. I would figure you would probably get uh, between 10 to 14 hours out of it. Okay. All right, sounds good. So certainly all day long. No. All right, so all the connection settings are contained within the job menu. 
and we can just jump to settings here. Under settings, we've got uh, our instrument settings. Now, the way Survey Pro works is we set the instrument, we name it as a configuration, and that's stored in here. So if we want to do a new instrument, we could hit new, and we need to give it a name. So we can name it, uh, I don't know. Yes. And then I tell it what model of instrument I'm going to be connecting. So, not Micron, Topcon. Now, when they have the brand in there, I say a specific model. And let's just call it a uh, GTS Mechanical. And then I tell it what connection settings I want to use. Com one would be if you're using a manual cable, but we can change that to Bluetooth. Now the way the Bluetooth is set up is it's set up through the windows on the data collector. So it's a little So it's has a device list here built in. Now if your instrument's on the list, you can just select it and go. Otherwise you'll need to hit the little Bluetooth button and go search for it. We can go to devices here, and uh, we could hit add new devices. It's going to do a search. Yeah, I noticed the Bluetooth turned off on yeah. this. Because I'm not connected to it anymore. Okay. So I've got to give the Bluetooth search a couple minutes. It'll find whatever device it is. Like here shows the model number of the instrument. Next. We'll check serial port because that's what I'm going to use from it and hit finish. So now I've added that device to my list. I can hit OK to go back and now I can just select that Bluetooth device from the list. Now once I have the device here I can hit settings and go look at a few more settings here. And you notice the Bluetooth light went back on because now I'm reconnected to it. Mm -hmm. I can set my EDM mode, distance averaging, the track light which this gun actually does have but it's not very useful unless you're doing stakeout. Yeah, we'll do stakeout. What's the track light? So the track light here, and I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Oh, that's fine. Because I never use it because I'm colorblind. But you'd have a red and green light. Oh, okay. And depending on which way you need to, tr to, to, to turn for the stakeout, like if you're facing, if you're way far away from the gun, mm -hmm. I can tell if I'm, I'm on this side of the gun because I can see one of the lights. Yeah. Or I can tell if I'm on this side of the gun because I can see the other light. Oh, so okay. So one of them's red and one of them's green. Okay. That's all the track light does is let you know what side of the instrument you're on. So then Again, the I can't tell the difference between the red and green. The so guy holding the me. rod will just be able to look at that and say, oh, I need to go this way or that way. That's right. All right. So other than that, those are all the Bluetooth settings. Um, and I've just created a new gun. So whichever one I want to use, I can highlight it, hit activate, and that'll make that the active instrument. Okay. And just for not confuse anybody, I'm going to highlight that and just delete it. Okay. And then you just continue on as what you showed earlier as yeah, far as just go to back side the job. Okay. Everything else is the same after that. Sounds good.